1時間え一1時間1時間待ったうんだってあのー、11時半から12時半までじゃないいや12時で終わったよ12時で終わった何時で始まったのえ何時で始まった1時間前だろじゃあ初めからいたのいたよ初めから始まる前からうんでシャバーシャバーもいた今浴びた、うん、11時からだったのかね始まったの11時半でしょ To work around the Supreme Court's ruling. And, you know, we are currently reviewing the plan. It, it was just announced, obviously, this morning.、Um, and we'll, we're weighing our options on, on how we could fight it. Job Creators Network Foundation agrees with the Biden administration that there is a, quote, crisis happening with student loans. But Parker says colleges and universities need to be brought to the table and they need to tell Americans how they are going to contribute to solving the problem that colleges and universities created. An arrest has been made in a long unsolved string of killings in New York. Here's Fox's Tanya J. Powers. Fox News has confirmed that New York City architect Rex Hewerman is the person. I'm going to go to the next one. 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 Hewerman, who is 59, was taken into custody Thursday night in Manhattan, where his business is located. Suffolk County Executive Steve Ballone says law enforcement never gave up. I want the public to know the message to the public is that, that we have never stopped working on this case. The case is now in the hands of a grand jury. Texas Governor Greg Abbott answers back after the city of Austin suspends its partnership with the State Department of Public Safety. Fox's Jeff Manasso explains. Texas Republican Governor Greg Abbott deploying additional state troopers to Austin, now totaling 130 personnel, after the city's Democratic mayor suspended its partnership with the Department of Public Safety in what appears to be a hasty response to local reports that state troopers pointed a gun at a child during a traffic stop. DPS later released full body cam footage from the traffic stop showing troopers did not point a gun at the child. The latest battle over Safety comes amid a crime surge in Austin with hundreds of police officer vacancies after the city defunded its police force. In world news, a leading human rights group in Haiti is warning about an upsurge in killings and kidnappings as the UN Security Council prepares to meet about the country's worsening violence. The National Human Rights Defense Network condemned what it called the government's inaction in a report issued yesterday. It noted that from May 1st to July 12th, at least 75 people were killed and another 40 abducted. Among those killed are at least six police officers. In final news, Ukraine will not be joining NATO anytime soon, as long as it is engaged in war with Russia. Chad Groening has this story. One of the biggest issues at the recent NATO summit in Vilnius, Lithuania, was whether war torn Ukraine should be admitted as a member. NATO isn't ready to start membership talks with Ukraine yet. But it is helping to train and modernize its armed forces and security institutions to ensure that the country can take its place among NATO's ranks after the war is over. Bob McGinnis is senior fellow for national security at the Family Research Council and author of Divided We Stand. Eventually, it's a long time, Brad. Yes, I can understand Zelensky wanting to be part of NATO, but I don't know if NATO nations welcome in Ukraine、uh, time. Retired Navy Commander Kirk Lippold, commanding the USS Coleman, was attacked by terrorists in 2000. The NATO charter specifically states that no member can be admitted while there is a state of war existing in that country. And Ukraine is in a state of war. So we are bound by the charter, as is every other NATO nation. Both Lippold and McGinnis believe that ending the war should be a top priority. That's all our time for now. Find more news on AFN.net.
お父さん今日行った時カードをもらったもらったよ赤いの赤いのああ普段黄色いやつでしょ赤だよあのいつもの男の先生今日はねあああああああああああああああああ So I went to the Associated Press official definition <laughs> or differentiation between the two. And the Associated Press says a skeptic is a doubter, a cynic is a disbeliever. <laughs> And they say the next step after cynicism is becoming jaded.、Uh, so you kind of get descending through this. Where cynics might be sneering and actively doubting something, people who are jaded are just so exhausted that they become apathetic. <laughs> so the jury is still out, and you say, Fred, what are you talking about? Well,、uh, let's start with a big story that broke yesterday, Thursday. And this was the official report. From the United States Secret Service. We have great respect for them. Tough job. They do a great job. But they issued their official report on that little bag of cocaine、uh, that was fo-、uh, found July 2nd at the White House,、uh, very near what's called the Situation Room. So this isn't a place where people who do their You know, little White House tours、uh, would normally go. In fact, we are told people who venture into this area have to sign in. They have to be signed in by somebody fairly official at the White House. So you know the story. July 2nd, news breaks.、Uh, I believe it's a Sunday. That、uh, the, this little bag of cocaine, I didn't know it was cocaine at the time. They did analysis, et cetera, et cetera, and found out it was cocaine. So、uh, we trusted that the Secret Service, because they told us that they would do an exhaustive investigation and find out who brought this little bag of cocaine into the White House. In fact, Corinne Jean Pierre, official White House spokes, was very confident that the、uh, Secret Service would get to the bottom of it. Well, Uh, when they released their official report yesterday, Thursday,、uh, they, they had a report. They, they had members, some members of Congress, into a room to give them the result. And here was the result as reported by the Associated Press No fingerprints or DNA turned up on the baggie of cocaine found in the lobby at the White House. In, in fact, what、uh, the United States Secret Service、uh, said was without physical evidence, the investigation will not be able to single out a person of interest from the hundreds of individuals who passed through the vestibule where the cocaine was found. And basically, they said the investigation is over. Kind of shocking because, as many have pointed out, The White House is probably the most secure building in the United States. Some people even say in the world. You don't just waltz in and have a visit and leave. You are checked.、You're, if it's a lady's purse, your lady's purse is checked, pockets are checked, all of that sort of thing. They have security cameras that operate 24 hours a day. The Secret Service says it's gone through those security cameras and they just can't come up with any kind of identification for the person who left that little baggie of cocaine. And that's why I say one can understand if you're skeptical, <laughs> one can understand if you're somewhat cynical at this point. Because you have to go back and review what has happened over the last couple of years 
when it comes to investigating something related to a Biden family member or a Democrat. So let's just stop and think for a moment. We, we all know about the Hunter Biden laptop. We all know what happened when that came to light just before an election and the story got buried. In fact, the laptop story and its investigation is still ongoing. Uh, apparently authorities can't get to the bottom of this. And indeed, there's a debate over what jurisdiction has charge of the investigation into this Hunter Biden laptop, which apparently has, and Republicans have told us they've had an opportunity to go through this. You know, we have whistleblowers talking about Hunter Biden and his relationship with the energy uh, company in Ukraine, Burisma, uh, his relationship with uh, Chinese interests, uh, the millions of dollars apparently that Hunter Biden has collected and uh, the conversations naming the big guy, uh, the big guy getting a cut, the big guy most people believe is his dad, now President Joe Biden. And yet, after all these investigations, we're still no for, you know, they, they've, uh, he's, uh, Hunter Biden has pled guilty to some minor charges, which most people say are basically a slap on the wrist after all of this. So that's, that's one thing that, as I say, the skepticism, the cynicism, cynicism is, is building. And, and then there's, of course, the Supreme Court leak, you may remember. The Supreme Court leak of the Dobbs decision. And what happened uh, so far in that investigation is very similar to the little bag of cocaine. Now, there's only so many Supreme Court justices there's only so many people who work for the Supreme Court justices. In fact, I think it was fewer than 40 people spread up, clerks between these Supreme Court justices. And after an apparent exhaustive investigation, they cannot find out who leaked that all-important Dobbs decision. So as I say, is there any wonder there is growing skepticism? And then we, we go back all the way to Hillary Clinton and her email server at her house. And how does the FBI treat that? Well, hey, no big deal. We'll invite Hillary Clinton, then Secretary of State, in to have a chat. And, um, uh, oh, by the way, we won't put her under oath. Honestly, an honest mistake probably made here. Uh, we don't think there's anything that warrants a charge. But Donald Trump gets elected president and then the knives come out. Donald Trump and Pete. All of those things. And uh, what do we have? Well, and I, I think we have to be honest. One of the big players in this is the mainstream media. If everything was reversed, can you imagine for a moment Donald Trump is still present? He's in the White House. And stories come out about one of his sons being involved with an energy company in the Ukraine, making money, using the name and the power of his daddy to make millions of dollars. Can you imagine for a moment that the mainstream media would just simply sit back and let all of this happen? Can you imagine if a Donald Trump, if he was president still, and a son had a known cocaine problem? And that son, like Hunter Biden, has been visiting his dad at the White House now frequently in recent months. If it was a Donald Trump's son visiting the White House, visiting his dad, had a known cocaine problem, and a bag of cocaine is found in a very secure area of the White House, do you think the mainstream media would just sit back and say, okay, uh, Secret Service has done this investigation and 
everything's cool. No DNA. That, that's, I want to go back to that for a second. No fingerprints or DNA found on that baggie. Did somebody have a pair of gloves on that no trace can be found? We have the best forensics machine probably in the world in Washington, D.C. You know, uh, they're able to get a strand of hair and they can analyze that and they can find out who that individual is. <laughs> this is not just law and order TV stuff, folks. They can, they're really good at this stuff. And yet, after this 10 day, 12 day investigation, find no fingerprints, no DNA. And as I say, the security cameras apparently find nothing. Now, after this briefing on Thursday to lawmakers about this, understandably, Republicans came out and uh, they're having a tough time with this. They just don't believe it. And I think the American people uh, are at this stage and they're wondering because you got to remember it's the flip side of all of this is how conservatives have been treated. I was thinking about the uh, pro-life demonstrator there, uh, Mark Houck in Pennsylvania. What did he do? He was standing outside with his young son outside a Planned Parenthood facility in Philadelphia. A Planned Parenthood supporter starts irritating his son. Mark Houck gives him a gentle shove. And 12 to 15 FBI agents show up at Mark Houck's house. Take him away in handcuffs in front of his family. Mark Houck, who has no... I don't think he's even had a parking ticket. But they show up with all that force. And of course, by the way, you know, that story goes to court and the court says, no, you've done nothing wrong. So you, you put the way the Biden administration, their officials, how they have been treated, and Democrats in general, how they have been treated, and you juxtapose that against Donald Trump Trump family, conservatives, pro-life, de you know, demonstrators. And you say there's something wrong. Any reasonable person would say there's something wrong. And I haven't had a chance even to get into the whole thing about how the Justice Department is treating parents who show up at school board meetings and the Attorney General of the United States is asked to write a letter and in that letter, he refers to these parents as domestic terrorists. So, as I say, you start to put all of that together. And is it any wonder why people are saying there is something definitely wrong in Washington, D.C.? And I think that is why, and there are other reasons, too, the competency of the, the current president. And we don't have time in this segment really to address his latest verbal fumbles as he traveled in Europe uh, this week. And then there's Kamala Harris, Kamala Vice President Word Salad Harris, who, by the way, is able to define artificial intelligence. She says it's AI. That's two letters. Yeah, that was the big statement this week. All right. I'm not cynical. I'm skeptic and I'm not jaded. But I am a little skeptical. <laughs> All right. All right, you're listening to the Friday edition of At The Core. Fred sitting in for a walker, much more ahead. Talking about the education system, we got a special guest coming up. She's going to be one of those who's a fighter out there to maintain integrity in our education system. Don't go away. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. My name is Abraham Hamilton III, and this is the Hamilton Minute. With this statement, Jesus affirmed what he'd already said in Genesis 1 and 2 and defined marriage for all time. Contrary to the protestations of the nouveau critical theorists, the nuclear family consisting of a married father and mother is not a Western sociological prescription or construct. Marriage did not originate in the West, 
Its origin is in suburban America. It started in Genesis, in the Garden of Eden. Marriage is God's idea. Therefore, he alone defines it. If you don't like it, your problem is with God, not me. Listen each weekday from 5 to 6 p.m. Central for The Hamilton Corner with Abraham Hamilton III, public policy analyst from the American Family Association. This is Raising God the Girls Minute with Patty Garibay of American Heritage Girls. Kids don't typically receive a holistic education on all things finance. More often than not, kids are sitting at their lemonade stand already planning how to spend a quarter before they've even earned a nickel. While there are kid-friendly investment apps, budgeting sticker sheets, and piggy banks, it's ultimately how your family treats money that form her habits. For some families, the question isn't, do we need this or can we afford this before making a purchase? It's, do we want this? This way of thinking can lead to a disconnect from financial realities that can result in some seriously irresponsible and ungenerous adults. As Christians, we're called to lead our lives in the love and service of others. Part of raising a generous, godly girl is financial literacy. We are all called to raise up the next generation of Christian leaders. Learn more about empowering girls at RaisingGodlyGirls.com. Hey friends, it's Jessica Peck, Dr. Nurse Mama, as your one-minute parenting coach. What were you thinking? Every parent is guilty of asking this rhetorical question when teens make a poor choice. But brain function for decision-making doesn't mature until the early 20s. What if instead of framing that mistake as a moral or spiritual failure, we view it as a decision-making failure? Our teens need us to help them navigate a complex world with high-stakes decisions. Coaching them goes something like this. You made a choice you regret. I know that hurts. Let's talk through how you made this decision to see where you could make different choices. I have faith you'll learn from this. I'll see you on the Dr. Nurse Mama podcast here on American Family Radio.